Hello Oak Rovers, this is going to be a video to show you how to use the quadratic formula to find the x-intercepts of a quadratic equation in standard form. Now what I mean by standard form is a quadratic in the form of ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to zero. Up to this point in the chapter you've used generic rectangles and diamond problems to factor quadratics and then you use the zero product property to find the x-intercepts. The problem is sometimes quadratics are not factorable, so then we need to find a different strategy to find the x-intercepts. This strategy is going to be called the quadratic formula. Now the quadratic formula looks like this. Here's what it means. The x-intercepts are going to be equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac and then I'm going to divide that all by 2a. Now it's important to know that a is the coefficient of x squared, b is going to be the coefficient of x, and c is going to be the constant when a quadratic is in standard form. Let's see how we can use this to solve a problem. So the problem I'm going to solve is 3x squared plus 7x minus 6. Now if I look at this problem, my a is going to be 3, my b is going to be 7, and my c is going to be negative 6. The first step is to substitute the a, b, and c into the quadratic formula. When I do that, I'm going to replace my b, or negative b, with negative 7, because I'm taking the opposite of b, then it's plus or minus b squared, which is 7 squared, minus 4 times 3 times negative 6 because a is 3 and c is negative 6. And then I'm going to divide that all by 2 times 3, which is 2a. Now let's simplify that a little bit. The key to solving quadratic formula problems is showing all your work. As soon as you start skipping steps, that's where you start making silly mistakes. So I'm going to work inside the square root sign and solve that, or simplify that a little bit. If I take 7 squared, that's going to be 49. Now if I take negative 4 times 3 times negative 6, here's what I'm going to get. The negative 7 stays the same, plus or minus stays the same. The 7 squared becomes 49, and I'm going to get plus 72. Now some of you might ask, Mr. Pedersen, how are you getting positive 72 out of that? And let me just explain it a little bit. I took negative 4 times 3, and I got negative 12. And then I took negative 12 times negative 6, and I got positive 72. So I just wrote down plus 72. And then I'm going to divide that all by 6. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to solve what's under the square root sign. So I have x or the roots or the x-intercepts are equal to negative 7 plus or minus the square root of 121 divided by 6. I'm almost done. The next thing I'm going to do is I am going to solve for the square root of 121. And fortunately, for me, this time, the square root of 121 is an integer, is 11. So I have negative 7 plus or minus 11 divided by 6. Now, a symbol that you probably have not seen yet in math is this plus or minus sign. What this means is that there's two cases, one where I take negative 7 plus 11, and one where I take negative 7 minus 11. So let's look at the two cases here. The first one is negative 7 plus 11. Negative 7 plus 11 is 4. So if I do that, I get x is equal to 4 divided by 6. And then I can simplify that down to x is equal to 2 thirds. So one of my x-intercepts is going to be 2 thirds. But I also have a second case. My second case is going to be, and I put the word or in there, if I have negative 7 minus 11 because I've already done negative 7 plus 11. So negative 7 plus 11, or, or minus 11, let's see what I get. So I have x is equal to negative 7 minus 11 divided by 6. Well, negative 7 minus 11 is going to be negative 18. So I have x is equal to negative 18 divided by 6. And negative 18 divided by 6 is going to be negative 3. So I have x is equal to negative 3. So those are my two x-intercepts of this quadratic, 3x squared plus 7x minus 6 is equal to 0. And that means that this parabola 
is going to cross the x-axis at 2 thirds and negative 3. Hopefully that helped you. If you have any other questions, please come in early tomorrow and ask me, and I'm sure I'll help be able to help you.